Hello there, beautiful people. Welcome to Nanabe's Kitchen, friends. I am excited, absolutely thrilled to present my spicy, rich, beautiful beef fried rice. Perfect for your parties. It packs a punch of flavor, a ton of crunch and color. It is also loaded with a variety of nourishing, satisfying ingredients. Let's jump right in, friends. So this is part of our beef series. Today I am using beef brisket, and I have trimmed a lot of that fat off. I'm also cutting them into long strips along the grain and then turn right around and cut them against the grain into very small bite-sized pieces. We are essentially dicing the meat. Then I transfer the meat into the pot and then I start layering my flavors, beginning with some onion paste, followed by some chopped Thai chilies. And also I have my garlic paste, my ginger paste, and it is time to season. So here comes some crushed black pepper and some salt. You want to season generously so that this meat's flavor will really stand out. I also added some of my homemade all-purpose seasoning, very, very similar to your chicken bouillon. So you can use that. And I've also added a pinch of curry powder, which is a one-stop shop for all the warm, inviting spices you would want in your savory dishes. Fennel seed, cumin, coriander seed, turmeric, ginger powder, just name it, all in there, so. All right, Perfect. so it's on the stove of medium heat and I've covered it and I'm going to let it cook for the next 10 minutes. And 10 minutes later, some juices have been released from the meat. It is starting to tenderize. It has absorbed all of those flavors we layered onto it. Now we need to let it tenderize even further. So we're going to need to stir it up and add a splash of water. That will go a long way to help this meat to tenderize. So cover it back up and allow it to cook still on medium heat for the next 20 to 25 minutes. We are cooking beef brisket, so we need to give it time and patience to tenderize so that when we eat it, we actually enjoy the juiciness of it not only would it be tender enough, but it will also have a slight chew to it, which is enjoyable. Now that it's cooked, we're going to separate the meat pieces from that flavorful broth. We're also going to strain that flavorful broth, and not because this is a mandatory step, but just as a matter of preference, I prefer to do this so that my rice, which is going to cook in this broth, can cook without all of that. Um, I would like to call it uh, meat residue. And the meat residue will not be discarded. It will be reintroduced. And I think you'll enjoy the way we reintroduce it. So keep on watching. So in this pan in which I'm going to cook the rice, I have poured in some oil. This is avocado oil. I have added just about a handful of onions, red onions chopped, as well as some Thai chilies. Then I also add my all-purpose seasoning, some curry powder, garlic that has been minced, and also some salt. Stir all of that in and cook for about a minute and the aroma should be popping right now. Wash your rice, friends. I'm using basmati rice today. Long, slender, elegant grains of rice. I've washed until the water was completely clear. Pour that into your pan and toast it until the rice is dry from the moisture you washed it with, all right? Now that is also going to ensure that it cooks beautifully fluffy. Now you're going to add the beef broth, follow up with some water. We're going to need to cook this rice like it's been fried before we even fry it. And we're going to need the moisture to cook the rice because the moisture is what's going to help build the steam that will essentially cook this rice fluffy. You're going to stir everything together 
to combine and then you're going to cover it with a kitchen towel or a paper towel that's lintless and the lid and turn the heat down to the lowest setting and cook for the next 15 minutes. Go back and retrieve their chilies because they have released their fragrance. You only need the fragrance and that's why I left the heads on. We don't really need much of the heat in the rice. So remove those, stir the rice, and it should be about 50% cooked right now. Cover it back up again with the paper towel as well as the lid and continue to cook on low heat for the next 20 to 25 minutes undisturbed and your rice should be fluffily cooked. See how I'm able to move it around with just the fork and it just moves so easily and elegantly like it's not being forced to move it's just moving with a, you know a feathery touch yes that's what we want now we're going to cook our fried rice but prior to that i need to trim off my corn this is sweet corn from the cob all right and the best way to do this is by placing a small bowl in a bigger bowl and putting the cob onto the smaller bowl and trimming it all right off into the bigger bowl so you don't make much of a mess. With corn kernels running all over the place, who's going to clean that mess up? <laughs> Not I, no. So I have in my wok some oil. I've heated it up and now I have added my beef pieces. And this time around, we're actually cooking on medium-high heat. So I cook it until the meat starts to brown. And then I'm going to add some Maggi sauce to this. Now, this is homemade Maggi sauce with Dawa Dawa. And you may substitute with store-bought Maggi sauce, even soy sauce, as well as some fish sauce will go a long way to introduce umami here. And I like to add my Maggi sauce later on when I'm actually browning the meats because it creates this very lovely, enjoyable coating around the meats. It gives it a nice color too. And because I've chosen to cook the uh, beef fried rice this way this time, that's why I added it when it's browning. Now, this is the meat debris that has gone into this flavorful oil. I'm going to cook that till it's toasty and dry and then i'll proceed to add my ginger my garlic all finely minced i've turned the heat down to the medium setting now so i don't burn any of these ingredients because i do not want to develop a bitter taste i've also added some all-purpose seasoning which is very similar to your bouillons so you can use chicken bouillon or vegetable bouillon here or even beef bouillon I've also added my Thai chilies, which I chopped up because this is essentially a spicy, rich beef fried rice. Follow up with my chopped onions. So I am cooking these ingredients as I add them about 15 to 30 seconds increments. Okay. Now, still on medium heat. We haven't cranked the heat up yet. I add my sweet corn, now that is raw, so we need to cook it, but we don't want it to release moisture. We want to just cook it through and let it retain its crunch, its sweetness, and its freshness. So at this point, I have kicked my heat back up to the highest setting. We're going to cook on high heat going forward, friends. And when I add the sweet corn, I cook for a minute, and add my carrots. I cook for another minute after adding the carrots. So the sweet corn will bring the sweetness clearly as well as the carrots will bring some more sweetness and some color as well as carotene which is great for your eyesight and for that glow on your skin. Now we also added some black beans. It's an optional ingredient, but I really love it in here. I've also just added some red bell peppers for that sweetness and that pop of color and crunch. Now that I only cook an extra 30 seconds after I add it. And then of course I taste 
because at this point we've added so many ingredients and we want to make sure that we have not diluted or compromised the m amount of seasoning we have in there. And when I tasted it, it was just perfect because my all-purpose seasoning does have salt in it. All right, now if you taste yours and you need to add more seasoning, please don't hesitate to do it. Because the last thing you want to do is eat anything that's bland. No fun. All right, so that's good to go. Now I am adding some of the rice. At first, I actually split it, the vegetables in two, and I'm doing the same with that brown beef because we are cooking the fried rice in two batches as my wok cannot accommodate all of the fried rice I'm cooking today. Now, after adding the rice and the browned beef, since both of those are cooked to perfection, we only cook an extra two minutes. Then I follow up with some crunch, some freshness, and also some green with some scallions or green onions, which I have chopped. Now, after I add that, I turn the heat off and I serve, okay? I transfer the first batch into my serving platter and do the same with the second and final batch. Do you love these colors or what? I love them. The crunch and freshness from these vegetables, the color alone, they're giving me life. Vegetables are good for you and they are also so, so kind to you. You just have to treat them well. Give them a good treatment and they'll be even kinder to you, friends. Look at the color, the crunch, perfect. I did have to add a little more rice because the rice to vegetable and meat ratio was kind of off on the second um, batch. So just eyeball it. Add your scallions and voila, it is time to dig in and tear it up. It is chop time, friends and family. Thank you so much for watching. I certainly hope that you have learned a thing or two and are inspired to give this lovely recipe a shot. Make it a great day, friends and family, and have fun, especially in that kitchen. Thank you, beautiful person, for watching the video all the way to the end. Kindly leave me a comment and subscribe down below. And don't forget to share the video as well. Also, watch more videos. It is chop time and here in Anaba's Kitchen, chop time is always yes friends. So pull up a chair. We are all friends and family here. <laughs>